Tunnel, bridge, tunnel, bridge, tunnel, bridge. I think you get the idea. Just imagine driving along this autostrada, or rather autoroute, one of Europe's most spectacular motorways. The deep blue Mediterranean Sea to your right, steep cliffs, olive groves and colorful villages clinging to the hillside to your left. The stretch from Genoa to Nice along the A10 in Italy and the A8 in France is no ordinary highway. It is an engineering masterpiece that winds its way through one of the most challenging landscapes on the continent. The concentrated power of the foothills of the Alps meets the gentleness of the Ligurian Sea. Of course, we don't have room for straight stretches. Instead, we have a constant change between tunnels, bridges, tunnels and even more bridges. There are over 100 tunnels on the Italian section alone. And why? Because the geography leaves no other choice. Let's take a tour on one of Europe's most breathtaking highway routes. What is the reason for its unusual and complex engineering? And how is the condition of the roadway today? Or is it even fun to drive on that stretch of highway? All the answers coming up next. The highway route from Genoa to Nice runs along the A10 in Italy and the A8 in France and is one of the most spectacular coastal roads in Europe. From Genoa the route runs westward through a dense succession of tunnels and bridges, passing towns such as Savona, Albenga, Imperia, Sanremo and Ventimiglia. After the French border the A8 continues via Mentor, above Monaco and finally ends in Nice on the Côte d'Azur. The roughly 200 km route follows an extremely mountainous coastline and is exceptional in terms of engineering and scenery, with a constant alternation between sea views, tight curves and engineering feats. We begin our journey in Genoa, one of Italy's most important port cities. From here we follow the A10, also known as the Autostrada dei Fiori or Motorway of Flowers. The route immediately takes us into spectacular terrain, between steep mountain slopes and the Mediterranean Sea. There is hardly any room for a classic road. Therefore, the highway follows a constant rhythm of short tunnels and high bridges. Both directions are winding with tight curves and oftentimes limited space on the sides. And sometimes they split from each other where needed. We will watch this behavior throughout the complete route. We pass small coastal towns such as Arenzano, Varazze and Selle Ligure, some of which are located below the route and some directly next to it. Here we can also see that the train tracks run much lower directly through the city center of these small coastal towns. Simply fascinating stuff. More about that later. Particularly striking are also the numerous short tunnels cut directly into the slopes, followed by high viaducts with amazing sea views. But you should rather keep your eyes on the street, on that tight and challenging highway, cause we want to reach our destination in Nice of course. Before Savona, the highway crosses several valleys but also runs through tunnels directly under residential areas. After Savona, the route becomes even more complex, but runs more inland for the first bit. The highway runs through particularly narrow and mountainous terrain. It remains extremely winding and continues to run through numerous tunnels and bridges. We pass places such as Albenga, where the landscape opens up briefly and is dominated by agriculture. This is followed by Imperia, where the route takes a huge 100 degree arc around the city. In several places the highway runs very close to residential areas, as the available space is extremely limited. In Sanremo the A10 reaches one of its most striking sections. The route passes through a series of tunnel tubes and serpentine sections, mostly above the city. The route often changes sides of the slope with brief moments when the sea or the roofs of the city come into view. From a technical point of view, this section is particularly challenging, both in terms of the route and the maintenance of the structures. We are approaching the French border at Ventimiglia. The Italian A10 ends here, merging seamlessly into the French A8, 
known as La Provinciale. The topography remains challenging on this section as well. Directly after the border, another section begins with numerous tunnels and viaducts, but we know that by now. The highway remains above the coast, with occasional views of the towns far below. We pass Menton, the easternmost city in France, without actually crossing it. In this region, the route runs well above the urban development. Between Menton and Nice, we continue to follow the A8. The motorway bypasses the Principality of Monaco and runs closely by, offering frequent views of the dense urban landscape between the cliffs and the sea. If you want to see a video about this fascinating city, let me know in the comments. Here we also pass by a huge quarry and football fields that are directly carved into the mountains. Before Nice, the terrain winds slightly and the highway runs through the suburbs of Nice, with numerous crazy exit ramp constructions. Our journey ends in the metropolitan area of Nice. The A8 passes above the city here and offers connections to the center, the airport and Antibé and Cannes. As the journey comes to an end, we look back on one of the most challenging motorway routes in Europe, both in terms of construction and integration into the landscape. The combination of steep coastal slopes, limited space, dense development and constant changes in elevation makes the route from Genoa to Nice a unique journey for both engineering enthusiasts and landscape lovers. But there will apply toll charges because we are in France and Italy after all. In Italy, the journey from Genoa to the French border at Ventimiglia costs around 18 to 19 euros. In France, there is an additional charge of around 3 euros from Mentor to Nice. In total, you should budget for around 21 to 23 euros in tolls for the entire route by car. You can pay in both countries by card, cash or electronic toll systems such as Telepass in Italy or Telepage in France. The motorway between Genoa and Nice is considered one of the most spectacular and complex transport routes in Europe. Drivers traveling along it experience an almost uninterrupted succession of tunnels, bridges and tight bends, a technical masterpiece that is of course linked to the unique geography and geology of this region. The Ligurian and French Riviera are located in a geologically extremely complex transition zone. Here the Alps in the west meet the Apennines in the east and fall at the same time directly into the Mediterranean Sea. Over many millions of years the movements of the Earth's plates in this zone have led to intense folding, uplifting and fracturing of the Earth's crust. The result is an extremely narrow, steeply sloping coastal landscape with narrow gorges, rugged ridges and terrain that is almost impassable. Within a few kilometers the terrain drops from high mountains to sea level, leaving little room for major transport routes. In this geographically confined area, the construction of a highway was a major challenge from the outset. A direct route along the coastline was practically impossible, as either historic towns and villages occupy the space or the coastline itself is too unstable, often characterized by erosion and landslides. A route further inland would have also offered a few disadvantages. Just a few kilometers north of the coast, the mountains rise steeply. A route through the hinterland would have required long climbs, high passes or complex alpine tunnels, and would also have cut off important coastal towns such as San Remo, Ventimiglior and Mentor from long distance traffic. The only feasible solution therefore was a route on a moderate slope, where there was just enough space between the mountains and the sea to accommodate a highway. But even here the terrain remained difficult. The route had to cross numerous steep valleys and transverse mountain ridges. As a result, it consists almost entirely of a complex series of tunnels and viaducts, many of them only a few hundred meters apart. On the Italian side alone, the A10 has over 100. The result is a motorway that doesn't follow an ideal line, but had to be built to avoid the landscape. It follows the narrow corridor between built-up coastal towns and impassable slopes, forced to constantly adapt to the topography. 
The railway line between Genoa and Nice on the other hand runs directly through the cities, because it was built much earlier, mostly in the 19th century. At that time there was still enough space along the coast and the railway was intended to connect the city centers not bypass them. Stations were centrally located, often near the port or the old town, which was ideal for passengers and goods. Unlike the motorway, the railway requires less space and can hug the coastline more closely. It can be built on a narrower right-of-way and can run between existing buildings. When the motorway was built decades later, the coastal area was already heavily built up, so it had to be routed along the slopes above the towns. In short, the railway is older, closer to towns and more space efficient, while the motorway is newer, faster and has been built at great expense around the towns. The construction of the motorway was a major technical and financial challenge due to the steep coastal landscape. Construction began in Italy in the 1960s to relieve the old coastal road. Due to the many tunnels and bridges, the cost per kilometer was up to 10 to 20 times higher than for normal motorways on flat land. The route was opened in stages and was completed up to the French border in the early 1970s. In France, construction of the A8 began in the late 1950s. Here too, the difficult terrain led to high construction costs, especially for tunnels and viaducts. The section between Nice and Menton was opened in 1969. Today both motorways are important transport routes and are considered engineering masterpieces, not least because of the enormous effort and high construction costs that are still being invested in maintenance and renovation today. The highway is now over 50 years old, which poses particular challenges for maintenance due to its complex construction and extremely demanding topography. The route requires particularly intense maintenance due to the many tunnels and bridges and viaducts that are constantly exposed to the elements, the proximity of the sea and vibrations from traffic. Extensive renovation and reinforcement work has been carried out on many structures over the past decades. Some tunnels have been retrofitted with modern safety technology and bridges have had to be reinforced or even rebuilt to meet current traffic requirements and safety standards. The Italian A10 in particular is known for its complex structures which require ongoing inspection and maintenance. This ongoing work regularly leads to traffic restrictions including speed limits, single lane traffic or temporary closures. Despite these challenges, the highway administration ensures that the route remains safe and passable. For drivers, this means that they must remain alert on the winding of the narrow road. On the other hand, they benefit from a well-maintained infrastructure that is constantly being modernized to meet the high traffic volumes and technical requirements. The motorway between Genoa and Nice is an impressive example of how transport infrastructure has to adapt to extreme geographical and geological challenges. The steep coastal slopes, narrow valleys and close interplay between mountains and sea required the construction of numerous tunnels and bridges, a technically demanding solution that still leaves its mark today. While the railway line runs directly through the towns due to its earlier construction and lower space requirements, the motorway had to be built above the towns, which made construction and maintenance even more difficult. The high costs and ongoing maintenance reflect the complexity of this route. The Despite its age, the route has remained safe and passable thanks to continuous renovations. For drivers, it offers a unique combination of technical challenges and spectacular views, a fascinating experience along of Europe's most beautiful coastlines. Hey, this is me, Imperator. If you really like this video, let me know in the comments or hit that like, hype or subscribe button. But if you really want to support my work, you could consider supporting me on Patreon or per channel membership. With the support over there, I can really focus on making more videos like that and grow as a channel. So I want to thank all the wonderful people who already decided to support me on Patreon so, so much. You're absolute legends. See you the next time. Bye bye.